Hi, I'm Marty Cohn, and welcome to Episode 9 of Grace Cottage Hospital's Healthcare Matters, a monthly show that brings you timely information on health-related topics. Grace Cottage is an independent healthcare facility located in Townsend, Vermont. Among its services are primary care, rehabilitation, and 24-7 emergency care. Its mission is to promote wellness, relieve suffering, and restore health. Nowadays, there's a lot of anxiety about the future of the U.S. healthcare system. In today's episode, we will be discussing the future of, the, of healthcare in the United States and how the U.S. compares with other parts of the world. Also, how we could get the biggest bang for our healthcare buck. We'll be looking at how you could do this on a personal level, or as well as how anyone can assess healthcare change proposals by looking at value. With us today is Dr. Kenneth Rudd, a Princeton University graduate who currently works as an emergency department physician at Grace Cottage Hospital, as well as a primary care provider at Dartmouth's Hitchcock Medical Center. Dr. Rudd is the father of six little healthcare consumers. Welcome, Dr. Rudd. Thank you, Marty. It's, it's great to be here. All right. So you're both an ER doctor in Vermont and a family practitioner in New Hampshire. What's the major difference in your role as a family practice doctor versus an emergency room doctor? Well, in family medicine, I basically try to keep people out of trouble. And then emergency medicine, I help them when they get into trouble. And definitely an ounce of prevention is worth a, worth a pound of cure there. Um, but my patients don't seem to believe me based on their actions. And my kids definitely don't believe me. And I must say that I have a knack for getting into trouble myself. So uh, you do the best you can. <laughs> OK, great. Well, now, now I understand that, that you have practiced in China. And that perhaps led to your interest in, in um, how different countries manage their health care. And well, why don't you start out, tell us about your professional experience uh, abroad. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really felt called into medicine to do overseas development work. Um, and it was a Sunday morning. My pastor was talking about the needs overseas, both medically and spiritually. And it really planted a seed in my heart and mind uh, that's grown over the years. Um, I uh, went to medical school where they had a, a master's in public health program and an MD combined degree. Um, so I could, you know, look at caring for specific people, but also the health systems and how to, how to best make an impact there. Um, then we moved to China. I learned the language wow. and um, helped, uh, uh, actually ended up working for the government uh, to collaborate to start up family medicine residency programs in China that were government certified. So that was, that was pretty neat. We did that for seven years. And then we moved back to the U.S. Um, where uh, I worked for Dartmouth College full time uh, to work with the Ministry of Health of China and other healthcare systems around the world to really collaborate on improving healthcare in the U.S. and, and everywhere. Wow, that is pretty exciting stuff. All right, so some say that the U.S. has the best healthcare system in the world, and others say that the, that the U.S. healthcare is, is broken. What do you say? I would say both are true. Um, I, I, obviously, I'm in the healthcare system in the U.S., and I, and I do have a lot of pride in it. I mean, we're really good at the scientific basis of medicine. Um, there's really good accountability in our system. There's a strong ethic so that you know, we really try to do no harm and be safe and then really try to bring about the things we're trying to big about. And in many ways, we do that, that very well. Great. On the flip side, the American is, uh, system is definitely the, the leader in the world of spending. Um, and unfortunately, we're the most wasteful healthcare system in the world. We are, so, okay, you're saying that we're the most wasteful system in the world. Um, what do you mean by that? All right, let me uh, show you here a little bit. So, we are the world leader in spending by far. Um, you look at sort of the percentage of GDP, the gross domestic product, you know, how much a country really makes and, and earns. Um, and America spends about 18% of our gross domestic product. Uh, the next 
a person, country just behind us only spends about 12%. And so we are by far, we spend one and a half times as much as everybody else. And when you look at our country, that's such a wealthy country. Right. We have the largest gross domestic product in the world. So the sheer numbers of dollars that we spend in healthcare is, is pretty amazing. And, and that boils down to uh, just over $10,000 per person in the U.S. on, on health care. Wow. So we're spending a lot on health care here in the States, but we're giving good medical care aren't we getting a good return on our investment? That is a good question. Um, in terms of return on investments, we're not getting the best, but I will let you guys, you know, and our audience really assess themselves. Um, so if you look at this, this graph, um, it, it graphs life expectancy versus amount spent per person on healthcare. It's in international dollars to be able to compare various countries. Mm -hmm. Um, but life expectancy is the, the basic measure of performance of a healthcare system. Um, and when you look at it, you know, there's countries that spend very little on healthcare and don't live very long. When you look at the U.S., you know, we spend a ton and we live fairly long, but we're definitely not that great. We're only about 48th in the world compared to countries. Um, so you look at this graph and you look at Cuba that spends, you know, about 200 international dollars per right. person. Right. And they actually live a little longer. So if, if you were to buy a plane ticket um, and you could go on the same plane to the same destination, same seats, and you could spend $200 per ticket versus $4,500 per ticket, right. you know, which would you choose? And, and when you look at that difference, you know, it's 4,300 international dollars. That's a waste because you're getting nothing more for a lot more money. Wow. So, so how can we get a better value for the healthcare dollars we spend? Well, we have to sort of look at, you know, what we're getting. Um, and as you compare, you know, there's, there's different factors that, that make one thing better than the other. Um, this here graph is, a, is put out by the Commonwealth Fund, and they looked at, you know, several in industrialized countries to see how they perform. Uh, and the U.S. for all we spend, we ranked dead last Whoa. on a lot of the, the comparative values. Right. Um, here's another way to look at it. The World Health Organization ranked healthcare systems in the world, and we came out 37th Whoa. For, for all we spend. So, you know, we can look at this and see how do we, how do, we do better. And I'm going to draw from our personal spending example. Okay. You know, you know sure. how, do, how do we look? Now, when I go to the, the, the grocery store mm -hmm. to buy chips, right? not that I'm going to the grocery store to buy chips, mind you. That was another um, show. Right. Okay. Hell, hypothetically, if yeah. I were to go to the grocery right. store right. to buy chips, you know, there's a hundred different kinds. Right. Um, and I love the little orange box in the, in the food store because what they do is they factor in the price, you know, how much you're getting. Sure. So you can compare apples and apples. Got it to see, you know, am I getting the best deal for my money? Sure. Um, and that's the type of thing that is so helpful, but we don't have that in healthcare, and I really wish we did have it. So, okay, so as uh, consumers of healthcare, um, we want to seek out the little, little orange boxes or its equivalent in healthcare. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? All right. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back on you okay. and I'll say, when you go to the doctor, how do you know how much it costs you? I get a bill at the <laughs> sent to me after all the services have been rendered. Okay. So up front, you don't know Not a how much it's going to cost. That's correct. When I go to the doctor, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Uh, when I'm the doctor and I'm ordering things, I don't know how much it's going to cost. Uh, I work really hard to try and figure that out and find that out. And I still don't know. It's, it's really hard. So, you know, let's say I go to a restaurant that has a menu and there's no prices on it. Right. There's two things I know about that. One, it's going to be very expensive. Right. And two, if I'm trying to figure out what I want and what's, what's worth it to me, I, I don't have the data to, to know that. Um, so that's one thing is, is it makes it hard to come up with a little orange box because we don't know how much things cost. And then... Let me ask you this. The other thing that goes into the orange box is, you know, the, the value of it. When you go to the doctor, how do you know that your doctor is doing a better job than, than any other doctor? 
Huh, good question. Um, I really don't. I mean, I, I, it's a relationship that I have. I've known the doctor for a period of time. That's about it. And that is about it. Ah. Because I'm the doctor sitting there and my colleagues in the next room, I don't know if I'm giving any better care than that doctor. Of course, I think I am and she thinks she is. And we don't really have any data uh, to make us think otherwise. There's no measurement. So we go on thinking we're giving the best care in the world and, and we're really not. So to come up with our orange box, you know, we don't know the cost and we don't know the value. So it makes it really hard to judge what, what is the value in all this. Okay, so, okay, forgive me, but this seems like a, a pretty simple concept. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do it? I mean, um, how can we go about figuring the cost and figuring out which doctor does the better job. Well, I agree with you that it's a very simple concept. Okay. The problem is ah. the complexity in, in medicine. This, this group mapped out, you know, all the different moving parts in healthcare, the healthcare system, and it's overwhelmingly complex. So you try to make an intervention and you just sort of throw up your hands and say, you know, I don't know, what can we do? It's, it's a lost cause. Um, and then on top of it, there's attitudes. Like no one in the U.S. really demands to know how much things cost and what am I getting for that. Um, instead, there's the opposite attitude. You, you know, I pay my health insurance dollars, right? And then that year, you know, I want to get the most for my money. So you know, bring it on. If you want to run tests or do something to me, you know, do it. Um, but the problem is that in medicine, more care is not better care. Um, you know, as hospitals, as great as they are, right. um, when you go there, you get poked and prodded all the time. You get woken up. Right. Um, most, most people agree that they would much rather be in the comfort of their own home, right. um, getting care there if they could. Now the, the hospital is great if you need it, but you know, I'd rather not spend those healthcare dollars if I can. It's sort of like, um, other, other insurance, you know, life insurance. You know, I'd rather not get the most out of that premium because <laughs> right. it means I got to die to do it or, That's correct. or uh, auto insurance. Um, I'd much rather not crash my car than get the most out of those, those payments. So it's a little tricky. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a different in environment. And um, uh, what we want to do is really create awareness and start asking and, and demanding you know, that this become more transparent in the healthcare system. Now, be, before you, you were talking about, you know, one of the things that, that, that happens is this, this concept of waste. Mm -hmm. um, can, you, can you give some, you know, some ideas or some examples of what's, what's waste in, in the field of medicine? Yeah. That, that, that's a nervous concept. Right, right, what right. Is waste? Right. And, yeah. What so are we I'll, talking about? I'll make it a little practical. There's, oh, a, there's a great illustration. Um, Robotic surgery. Robotic surgery. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't that sound great? It sounds great. Hey, want, want me to sign you up yeah, for some really? robotic surgery? <laughs> yeah, I, I want a robot to be operating on me. Yes. Exactly. Right. Um, so they've, they've studied this and, you know, there was a New England Journal of Medicine article that um, talked about it. And clearly one thing they figured out about robotic surgery is it's more expensive. So on these, on these procedures that are about $25,000 each, you know, you can increase the cost to 28000 uh, by throwing in the robots. But the societies that, that looked at this and compared right. said, you know, there's no evidence to say that robotic surgery is even as good as traditional surgery, let alone any better. So, you know, if you go buy a car and the, the salesman says, uh, you know, get to watch those uh, uh, car salesmen. Right. But, uh, no offense to any car salesman out there. But if you have one car for twenty-five thousand dollars right. and another car for twenty-eight thousand, right. and you ask them, okay, you know, they ask you which which car do you want to buy? Right. They say, okay, what makes this car better for the three thousand dollars more? Right. And they say, um, I I don't know. I it I don't know if it's any better. Um, I don't know if it's the same, and I don't know if it's actually any worse. But don't you want to buy the more expensive car? Of course not. <laughs> but that happens in medicine all the time. The way the, the the way the system's designed. Oh my goodness! Great. So so, what can we do about eliminating the waste in our medical system? All right. It really goes down to, to value, as I've been been talking about. So in your own finances, you you look at 
uh, the little orange box and you try to try to find out, okay, where's the biggest bang for the buck, right. the healthcare buck, as you, right. as you talked about before. Um, and it's really cost and benefit. Things that drive up the cost uh, are going to reduce the value in something. Um, things that drive up the benefit are going to make more value right. and, and vice versa. If you can reduce costs and get the same benefit, that increases the value. Right. Um, and so... You know, you look historically, and our system's done a, done a good job, particularly in the public health realm. You right. know, clean water, sanitation, um, interventions like that are a small amount of money for a, for a large impact. Uh, you look at immunizations, very small amount in our healthcare dollar spending, but you look at the impact, and, and people lose sight of this. Right. You know, there's about 5 million significant illnesses every year alone in the U.S. that are prevented. By immunizations, and there's about 500,000 deaths. Um, and at a you know just a few dollars per person, these these innovations have a huge impact sure. for the amount spent. Or or you look at aspirin, you know one cent a tablet, and the impact you can have on on heart attacks, on strokes, which kill 25% of the world's population, right. is huge. And you compare that to one open heart surgery. And you can you can treat thousands and, and tens and even hundreds of thousands of people. Um, so you want to look at healthcare, and and resources are limited. You know, every dollar you spend in one place is going to be you know a dollar you don't spend elsewhere. And it's easy to think like, oh, you know, we'll just spend it. Right. Um, and the reality is, people have this attitude, you know, oh, healthcare's paying for it. You know, let's do it all. Right. But the reality is, we're paying for it. Right. And you see the premiums just go up and up, and you pay more. So then I want to get more for that sure. uh, dollar, <clears throat> and it and it creates this this system. But you want to really get back and look at, you know, how are we investing those dollars, and are we getting the the biggest bang for that buck? Now I know I, I understand that you're you're a strong proponent of of shared decision making between providers and patients. Yes. Tell me about this approach. Okay. Yeah, and that's 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 key because part of this whole idea of value is what's important to the patient. Um, you know, the surf and turf might be worth it to me, um, but it's not to other people. If I was allergic to shellfish, you know, that's right. going to be a really bad value. Right. Um, so how do you do that? And it really amazes me how out of touch medicine is with the consumers. You know, healthcare. People, patients are, are healthcare consumers, uh -huh. and I, I want you to look at this study because it okay. just this blows me away, but makes the point. Okay. So they interviewed uh, breast cancer patients to see what was important to them. Okay. And they gave a bunch of different aspects, and they ranked them. You know, what was most important to you? Sure. Uh, top to bottom. Right. They did the same of doctors and said, "What do you think is most important to patients?" And wow. And guess how the doctors did? Wow. That is pretty astounding. <laughs> so, and then I'll actually walk through these. So, right. you know, breast surgery, how important it is to, to keep your own breasts. 71% uh, of doctors thought, you know, that was a top three, one of the most important things. Right. But only 7% of patients thought wow. it was a top three. Um, what was most important to patient was to, the patients that was to look natural without clothes. Um, and, you know, doctors didn't, they, they did think that was important, too. So there was correlation there. Right. Um, but then you look at other things like live as long as possible. You know, you, the doctor in me says, yeah, yeah, that's that's what it's about. Sure. Even the you know, life expectancy stats. Right. So 96% of doctors said that was most important. Only 33% of patients. Wow. Yeah. And obviously, it's their life. So, you know, quality of life is factoring sure, in sure. for them more than it is the doctors. Absolutely. We're used to data and statistics. And then finally... You know, avoid using a prosthesis. Doctors right. didn't think that was important at all, but one third of patients thought that was most important. And, and if you had an industry that was this out of touch with its with its consumers, right. I mean, it'd be it would be laughable. Right. I mean, it, worse, it would be bankrupt. I mean, it just wouldn't. Right. <laughs> it, you, right. You can't have it. But yet, this really goes on in in medicine because some of the things that we've been been talking about. So, shared decision making <clears throat> is the way to bring in what's important to the patient. Okay. So, you know, this slide, there's there's two main components of a healthcare decision. One, you know, the science behind it. Right. And that's where the, the U.S. healthcare system excels. Okay. Um, but then trying to diagnose what's important to a patient. Right. 
we do horrible. Um, but those are two equally important aspects to, to the decision making. Um, so you really need to, to, to bring in both of those. Um, and uh, that's, that's really the, the heart of it. And, and the primary care doctor in me says, yeah, you know, this is what we need to be about. For shared decision making, that, that implies that there's a relationship with an individual and their medical provider. And, it, you know, it seems a lot of times, well, in, in emergency room or whatever, you, you take whoever is available when you're sick and, or if you have a, have a special need. So I'm sure you could attest, and doctors are very busy people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you suggest one goes about building this relationship um, with a trusted professional? So you have that shared decision making. Yeah, yeah, and that's where um, that relationship is so key right. that you have with a doctor that you that you trust. You know, have the rapport, and that's where relationship comes in, um, right in the middle of of that. And and I see this tendency. You know, people. Uh, change doctors and and each time they go to the clinic they they see a different person right. I, I think that really undermines this so I really say to people you know first of all you have to have a primary care provider a quarterback that you know can coordinate all the different sure pieces of, of medical care from specialists and bring in you know what's important to you and know right. you um, and I wish there was a better way to go about that in our system. You, you kind of, it's trial and error. I wish there was sort of a match.com for, right. for finding your PCP, um, but it's not there. Uh, so having someone, and then really being an advocate for yourself to say, you know, this is the person I want to see over and over, and it's, it may mean some inconveniences, um, but really being an advocate for yourself that, you know, I want to see my doctor, because it takes time to build that relationship, but that relationship's so invaluable in bringing your preferences into the medical decision making and, and being able to communicate to you and care about you as a person. Now, is that a change that you've seen? I mean, it, you know, in terms of having that personal relationship, is that something that we've gotten away from? I would say yes and no. Um, one, I think, you know, that's really the heart of every primary care doctor is right. to have that relationship. Yeah, sure. Um, and that's what gives it is it meaning and that's that's what I love about being a, a family doctor is right. you know I know people and their situation and, sure. and to be with people um, at their you know the greatest moments and some of sure. the most difficult moments of their life uh, that's really the heartbeat of, of being a doctor and I and I do see nowadays more and more um, there's a lot of pressure on that uh, and it and it it makes it difficult being in the system, but part of that is you're seeing more and more um, undermining that relationship, and that you see different people at hmm. different times. Well, so so you've talked a lot about how we um, we're spending our U.S. dollars, and, and you talked about how we can save money and increase the uh, return on our investment. But what about how we structure the you know medical? payment system to begin with in the United States. You know, it's a, it's, it's a combination of private and governmental, government-based insurance programs. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I can. I've given this, obviously, a lot of thought. It's really on people's hearts and minds. There is a lot of anxiety uh -huh. about healthcare uh, nowadays. And, you know, is it going to be blue skies for the U.S. healthcare right. system in the future? Or is it going to be stormy seas? And, um, and what's interesting is that that organization, the Commonwealth Fund, that compared the different healthcare systems, right. the top three performers in that all had different payment models. Oh, jeez. So <laughs> with, if you keep that idea of value right at the beginning um, and keep it central and core, there's different ways to go about it. Um, but in the U.S., it's a little tricky, you know, with our expectations, our present system. It's hard to bring about change. Um, and there's something American about, you know, I want, I want the best. I want sure. to be able to choose. Um, when I, I look at, you know, what's been done, the Affordable Care Act right. really was, a, in my assessment, I'm speaking for myself, sure. not anyone else I represent. Uh, I think that was attempts to make steps in the right direction. Uh, as imperfect as it was and as difficult as it was, you know, to try to move towards value. Sure. Uh, the thing I see nowadays is some of the proposed changes really seem like they're a step, you know, backwards in the wrong direction from my assessment looking at, at value and the things we've, we've talked about today. Um, so 
in my opinion, I think the U.S. the you know the most efficient way to go about this and get accountability in the system and, and cost you know containment right. um, and cutting costs is what we need to do because remember we're spending 18 percent of our GDP and the experts in the world say you know about nine percent is the right number. Wow. So on your personal budget, if you're spending double what you should, you know you do cut it back. Um, I think a single payer system is really the the way to go. Um, Medicare is already doing a lot to move in this direction. Sure. They understand things, and when you have one person or one system that can help, you know, look at the value and say, no, we need to shift the monies here. Right. Because um, as I said, you know, it's a trade off. One of my friends says, life is a trade off, and where you spend in one place, you're taking it from from elsewhere. So I think. You know that's the easiest, most efficient way to to really bring about that. But wow. it's not very American to talk about you know restraining costs. And I, I look at credit card consumer debt. You know that's very American to go. Oh, I, I've got all this credit. Let me go out and spend it. But then sure. you pay the piper afterwards. And we're doing that in our healthcare system. We're we're overspending. Um, we're, we have tons of waste that we can cut back. But given that there is a lot we can cut back on our healthcare dollars right. and save and still keep the value and maybe even increase the value. So I think it is hopeful for the future. It's just going to be rough getting there. But at least there's some hope. Yes, there is. And keeping that the heart of, of medicine right at the heart with you know that relationship with a primary care doctor um, and having someone that's going to really be at out, looking out for your best. Uh, and, and at a heart, you know, we were called into medicine to do that for patients, to care for patients. Sure. And that's why people go and become a doctor for the most part. And so that, that heart is there, is still medicine, and I want to do what we can system-wise to facilitate that. Thank you, Dr. Rudd, for being on the show. And it, it's fantastic. I appreciate all the, the thought that you've put into this. It's, it's all good stuff. Thank you for your, your time and, and having me on the show. I appreciate it. I also want to give a, a shout out to uh, Roland Boyden for doing all the magic behind the, the camera. Also, thanks to BCTV for helping us bring this show to you. If you have any questions or concerns, send them to info at gracecottage.org, info at gracecottage.org. I'm Marty Cohn. Thanks for watching. Oh.